have you here as we kick off our summer professional development series. I'm very excited to introduce Dr. Dre Carter, but before I do, a few points of order. Uh, we love to feed all of you. We do. We love spending our money to feed you. However, we really hate guessing. So please be mindful to register for all of our events. Uh, we had 75 walk-ups at Fire at 5, which is awesome. We love to have people participate, but I hate trying to guess how many people we need to provide food for, so if you don't register, I can't promise you get to eat. All right, I'll stop talking, let's, let us get to the main event. We do have Dr. Dre Carter joining us today. She'll be giving us a little pointers on LinkedIn. Dr. Dre, would you like to introduce yourself? All right, thank you. Um, just as a heads up, the poll this actually closes at 12.30, so uh, if you want to take a picture now and fill it out before, before 12.30, uh, go ahead, otherwise uh, it, it will be closing. So, All right. So today we're going to talk about how to kind of upgrade your LinkedIn profile. Uh, we have a little plant theme going. We've got some plants on the table. Um, we got some green worksheets for you. Keep them in the, the, um, uh, the fun plant theme here. Um, just going through, giving you some tips on you know things you can do with your profile to get some more visibility. Maybe some things you haven't thought of before. Okay, so first to start out, I want to just go through a few stats to showcase just how much of an impact LinkedIn has. So uh, as of this year, uh, there's over a mil uh, one billion sorry, members worldwide on LinkedIn. So a very significant portion uh, of the world's population is on LinkedIn. So just in case you're like, I don't know who to network with, there's a billion people that you can talk to uh, right at your fingertips. There's over 67 million companies listed on LinkedIn. Again, if you're like, what opportunities exist? Over 67 million at minimum places that you can work for. There's around 65 million people that use LinkedIn to search for jobs each week. So again, it's a, uh, you know, I, I kind of think of it as almost like a, a Google, but for jobs, right? So again, lots of people using this website for the job space. And then the last couple of things I want to mention in this space, there are six people hired every minute on LinkedIn. Um, and I, I uh, am also one of those people. So I actually teach at Columbia University uh, online as adjunct faculty. I got that job through LinkedIn. So I know it works. <laughs> and uh, I know people do look at uh, you know, your resumes and CVs that you submit on there. The other stat here is that 48% of people doing the hiring on LinkedIn explicitly use skills data to fill their roles. We'll talk a little bit more about skills uh, in this presentation, but if you're like, hey, what should I fill out skill-wise on my profile, uh, just know that having that section filled out is really important when you're applying for jobs on LinkedIn. There we go, okay. So just a little bit uh, about me. So currently, uh, I'm a senior manager of data science at John Deere. I'm on, uh, I run the personalized experience team for our digital platforms. So uh, basically we create custom experiences for people who are coming and using our platform. So they have a little bit of a unique experience to them based on their usage of the different software. I'm also a U of I graduate, so I got my undergrad in crop sciences and then my PhD in informatics. I've also had a couple of other positions at Deere, um, both in the data science space, so as a data scientist um, and as a manager of a uh, data science team that we uh, had here in, in Chennai. And then I also was the site leader for the smart, uh, P and G Smart Lab here in the research park as well. So uh, just a, a few highlighted uh, pictures there. One of them being the research park career fair uh, that happens. Uh, just I think this was. This is earlier this year, I think that was a picture of this year, so. Okay, so first section, which is also the first section I put on the worksheet in front of you to help you follow along with things, is the first impression. So what do people notice first? So we have the top of the profile. So right when you click on someone's profile, this is the first you know, set of information that you see. So one is the header picture, so you want to make sure that you change the default to something that's exciting for you. Uh, this was actually 
from the Ag Tech Summit that we had in Research Park. I really liked the letters, so I thought that would be a cool uh, header picture there. And then again, adding a clear headshot. So, um, you know, it, it, we're having the, the headshot workshop uh, later in Research Park, so you can get a nice headshot if you don't have one. There's also a headline. So the headline has a 220 character limit. You want to use as many of those characters as you possibly can because it's how people will find you when they search different terms in the search box on the LinkedIn website. You also want to make sure you have your contact info filled in and also fill in your latest um, experience and education as well. Those are things that also show up at the very top of the profile. So I want to talk just a little bit more about the headline. So since you know, a good portion of you are, are current students, uh, I, I want to give a, a student example here for how to build your own headline. So it kind of consists of three main components. You have your current title or position, your education, and your interests in the workspace. So uh, I have here just some sample information to give you an idea. So I put data science intern at John Deere, uh, undergraduate in comp sciences, University of Illinois, and then interests, data analytics, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. So we're going to combine kind of three aspects together to build our headline. So this would be a sample headline. Data science intern at John Deere, so position first with the company. Um, I always like to add a little uh, emoji, so feel free to add your choice of relevant emojis. Um, you know, bachelor's degree in crop sciences, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, um, and then I just put like an example activity, president of a club, and then your interests. This is 206 characters. So I wanted to give you a good visual representation of kind of how much wording is there and how long this type of uh, headline would be. Again, the things that you're putting in your headline when people go to search on LinkedIn, then you'll be more searchable if you have those different words, uh, keywords in your headline. So the about section, also at the beginning of the profile, I always recommend about three to five sentences. Uh, the character limit is uh, 2,600. Uh, this, my current section has 979 characters, again, just as a visual reference. Um, but I kind of like to, to use the formula of a current role plus a sentence about what you're doing in that current role, a previous role, a sentence about what you're doing in that, what you did in that previous role, and then adding just a couple of strengths in your education. So it's almost like taking your headline and expanding on it a little bit more. Um, so again, you don't have to use all 2,600 characters here, but again, I like this you know, kind of formula of one to two roles, your interest in your education, just expand it out a little bit. So the featured section. So the featured section has either posts that you can feature, uh, that you've posted on your feed, or you could also put you know, uh, a document uploads. So this could be your resume or CV. You can have a link to a website you've made. You can have a link to your GitHub here. So you can have a variety of different pieces of media showcased here. I always recommend having at least one featured post in this section. And you want to place the most important posts in the first three slots. This tends to change a little bit with LinkedIn when, whenever they play around with formatting. Um, as of a few weeks ago, the first three slots show up on the desktop version. Um, and so I, you know, you'll see this rotate very often. Uh, on my profile, I like to keep that area fresh so that you're always seeing something different if you visit my profile. Underneath that, you have the activity section. So the activity section shows essentially everything that you're doing on the website. What's really important about this is it's publicly visible. So you know it's a good measure of showing people kind of how active you are on the website, but also you can think about how you want your activity to reflect on you. If you want to comment on every single post that you see, it's going to show up here. Uh, I, I wanted to highlight um, the images part of my activity, which is all the different images I posted over the last few weeks. I thought made a, a neat, neat collage to put up here. But as you can see, you know, someone can go through and click on the different uh, categories, posts, comments, videos you've uploaded, if you have a newsletter or documents you've uploaded. So again, thinking about 
you know, your activity and how you want that to reflect on you. Okay, so the second section, high-key employable. We're not low-key employable with LinkedIn, we want to be high-key employable. So are you filling out the most important sections, kind of the beat of your profile? So the experience section, this is where you're going to put all of your uh, jobs that you've had, your different internships, um, or if you've had like extended volunteer positions. Uh, I put an example of that uh, here. I work with uh, San Diego State University um, on an, uh, a COVID-19 research group that was international, and I did that for about a year and a half. And so this is a good example that um, you can have both paid experiences and unpaid experiences here. Since, uh, you know, when you're, you're filling out the experience section, you want to make sure you at least add one relevant experience, hopefully more over time. And you want to have at least kind of one to two uh, sentences on main responsibilities, and then adding three to five skills as well that were kind of the main skills that you developed and used with that experience. I also recommend adding a web page or video links with custom thumbnails. Again, what's the difference between you know LinkedIn and a paper resume? The interactivity piece of LinkedIn is really awesome. That's like you want people to click on things, you want them to read through things. So I always recommend add those web links and those video links, um, and then customize that thumbnail as well. That way you're not just given whatever default that link has. For the titles of your positions, you want to make sure you use your full titles. Not everyone is going to be familiar with all the abbreviations of things. So for uh, you know, the, the easiest to understand for your audience, make sure you're using those full titles. There is a 100 character limit on those as well. There's also a 2,000 character limit on the description. So again, 2,000 characters is, is quite a bit, but just being mindful of you know, what you're sharing. So next would be the education section. So you want to make sure when you're filling out the titles, you're using your full degree title for your education and also your concentration because that's, again, something that's going to kind of help you stand out. So um, for example, I did my undergrad in crop sciences, but my concentration was in plant biotechnology. So you want to be sure to highlight those things because those are things that are going to help you stand out. You also have the ability to add web pages and video links with custom thumbnails. So again, adding that interactivity. Um, an example of that, so for my uh, doctoral degree, I added a link to my dissertation. So if people are interested in reading my dissertation, they can just click it right there. It will take you to the uh, University of Illinois Ideals website, and they can read it right there uh, uh, online. And then also you can add you know, three to five skills you know, for that degree as well. So thinking about what are the major things that you learned uh, in your degree, you can list those there as well. All right, so the skills section. So um, on the worksheet, I, I gave you some space to think about the different tools, technologies, and skills and things uh, that you've been developing so far. On LinkedIn, skills are placed in four different categories. They are industry knowledge, human technology, interpersonal skills, and then there's an other category. I actually didn't have anything on my profile that was classified as other, so it didn't show up for the sake of this screenshot, but that is a, an option there. You want to make sure when you're filling out the skills section to use LinkedIn's wording. So, um, if, you know, sometimes with different abbreviations and things, if you type something in, it, like, it may not show up correctly or, you know, it may make it less searchable. So, a good way to kind of figure out what are some of the wordings of skills and things that LinkedIn looks at, if you go to some job postings on LinkedIn, you can see some of the skills that they're looking for and the wording they use for that, and that's a really good helper for figuring out which skills you want to add to your profile. There's also an option to take skill assessments. So if you have a few extra minutes, skill assessments can give that kind of signal to uh, recruiters on LinkedIn, hey, I passed the skill assessment, you know, I kind of a, a little bit more proof that you know more about that, that area. And then also make sure to attach skills to your education and experiences. So for example, I mentioned that my undergrad degree focused on plant biotechnology, so I have biotechnology listed as a skill, um, and then I attached that to the education at the University of Illinois. 
Oh, and there's also a max of 50 total skills, although I think that also fluctuates a little bit sometimes with LinkedIn updates as well, but it's around that number. So like I mentioned earlier, the three kind of main categories of skills that LinkedIn lists, your industry knowledge, tools and technologies, and interpersonal skills. So with industry knowledge, these would be kind of your high level theory, um, conceptual topics, things like that, like data analytics, internet of things, or IoT, market research, uh, categories like that. Your tools would be like the specific things that you're actually using to do the work. So that's things like Python, R, SQL, AWS. And then interpersonal skills is everything to do with working with people. So things like team management, public speaking, and leadership. One thing to note about skills is that, you know, especially with the increased use of, you know, AI, artificial intelligence, chatbots, all those fun things, there's actually been a shift recently that skills around working with others have actually increased in importance. AI is slowly replacing those lower level simple technical tasks. So that means that when you think about standing out in the job process, highlighting those abilities and getting really good at working in groups, being a leader, being able to manage projects and things like that, those kinds of things are becoming more important. And so with the two images I placed up here, I just wanted to you know, kind of highlight that shift. We see teamwork went from kind of 10th on the list for the most in-demand skills last year to this year being fifth on the list, meaning it's even, you know, it's, it's increased quite a bit in importance. Okay, so the third section we have, or kind of the end of the profile, uh, I call this ending with pizzazz. So did you close your profile out strong? You don't want just kind of the education to be the last thing they see on there. You want to add some other things to really help make your profile unique. So one would be the volunteering section. So you want to make sure when you're filling out the volunteering section, add the position and the event name and the title. I find this area of LinkedIn, uh, you know, with, with the text availability they have, it's kind of odd because it has a little bit less structure in that area. So I find that it's best to put both the position that you had and the event name in the title. And then also, again, adding web pages or video links with a custom thumbnail. Um, so for example, first thing I have on here is the Research Park um, uh, Ag Tech Hackathon. Uh, that happened earlier this year, and there's a link. You can go to the Research Park website and read all about it. And then I also wanted to point out that virtual events count as well. I've, uh, I've uh, helped out with, for example, the Grace Hopper Celebration. They do a lot of uh, track selection and things virtually where they have hundreds of volunteers go through thousands of proposals over the course of a couple months. And so that's an opportunity where it, you know, you're still volunteering even though it's fully virtual. The next section would be the honors and awards section. So here you're going to want to add any types of scholarships, fellowships, any types of honors, competitions that you participated in, hackathons you participated in. And you want to add the associated organization from your experience section as well. So for example, um, there's a couple of programs I participated in in grad school uh, associated with a couple of different um, organizations. And so you want to be able to you know, have that in your experience section so you can connect those. It kind of creates that uh, you know, cohesiveness throughout your profile. Again, you'll see a theme here, adding a web page or a video link, add your custom thumbnail. So focusing on that interactivity piece of your LinkedIn profile. Another section uh, that you can have is the publication section. So with the publication section, you can put things like your title, which is actually the only required field uh, for any entry in this section. Of course, I recommend you fill out more than just the title, um, but you can also put the Know, name of the publication, the publication date. I like to add the abstract. That way, if you know someone reads that and well, they find it kind of interesting right then, then they might be more inclined to click on the link to the publication. The description is a 2,000 character limit. Uh, with publications, you'll often reach that pretty quickly or end up having to you know, cut out a few sentences. Also, add all the authors. So, this publication that I have as an example here was from 
um, my work with the COVID-19 research group, and we had authors located across the world. So adding them to this also helps give them uh, visibility as well. There are also additional sections to consider, such as causes, so highlighting important causes that may uh, be important to you, social causes, humanitarian causes. Um, there's also courses, so different types of coursework, specialized courses that you want to highlight that can help you stand out. Languages, so if you know any languages more than one that you could, you know, uh, you know, talk in at a even at a beginner level because you can you can put your proficiencies on there. Um, definitely highlight those uh, languages there. Projects, so any types of group work. Uh, it could be a school project, a group project. It could also be a research project that you were a part of. You can highlight that here. And then organizations. So if you're a part of any registered student organizations, RSOs, um, it could be fraternities, sororities, it could be honor societies, um, you know, different types of professional organizations. You could list all of those as well. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to cover is tracking your stats. So after you've gone through and you've spent time you know, revamping your profile and everything, you want to get visibility, right? The idea is to get visibility, to get people to look at your profile. So you want to make sure that you're attracting the audience that you want. So everyone here has the ability to get free LinkedIn stats. Uh, this time last year, there wasn't as much granularity available uh, on LinkedIn with their analytics, but they are constantly revamping things, so it's gotten a lot better. So there's four main uh, things that I want to highlight in the LinkedIn stats uh, space. So one of them is post impressions. So if you're posting things on LinkedIn, this is the number of times that your posts were displayed on the screen. There's also profile viewers. So this is the total number of people who have viewed your profile, and then followers, so the total number of people that currently follow you. This includes people that you're connected with and also non-connected followers. So if you didn't know when you connect with someone, um, often you know, they'll become a follower, but also people can just follow you without actually sending a connection request as well. So those numbers can differ. And then search appearances, so this is the number of times your profile appears in search results. So again, when you think about the words that you're adding to your headline um, and those different terms, that's something that's affecting those search uh, appearances. So if you go into your profile, there's a, uh, an analytics section, and there's a, a little bit of text that says show all analytics. And if you click on that, it will take you to a more extended page that has more detailed information. So one of them is the profile viewers. So if you click on profile views under the analytics section, you'll get here. So some of the things that you'll see include viewers you might be interested in. So this is something where if you want the, you know, a bunch of details on those things, you'd obviously have to get LinkedIn Premium, but it still gives you a good idea of how many people in these different companies you might be interested in. And they look at that by looking at other people's profiles and saying, oh, you have some common commonalities with some of these other folks, might be of interest to you. There's also viewers that you can browse for free. So again, giving you an idea of here's some folks that have clicked on your profile, we think you might be interested in looking at them. And then also all other viewers, again, giving you an idea of different titles of people that are looking at your profile, different companies that they're working for. So again, helping you understand who is looking at your profile. With search appearances, if you click on search appearances under the analytics section, you'll get to these screens. So one of the screens is the top job titles uh, of your searchers. So again, looking at who's got what in their job titles is, and you know, looking at your um, uh, looking at your profile in the search. And so one of the things that's really interesting is job titles that you were found for. So they're matching things to both your headline and things in your profile. So for example, three out of my top job titles I was found for have manager in the title. So that makes sense. I've got manager in my headline, and I've got manager in several experience areas. So these are terms that users have typed into the search box. 
There's also top companies that your searchers work at. So no surprise, John Deere is one of my top companies that uh, get, that people are uh, you know, show up with the search appearances, uh, but also other companies from uh, different uh, industries as well. Again, giving you an idea of you know who's looking for people with um, your different skill sets and, and uh, experiences. Okay, and then followers. So if you click on Show All an Analytics, and then Analytics, it takes you to a dedicated page. Um, at the top there is a post and an audience tab. Under the audience tab, you'll see new followers. So it gives you a graph, and you can select past seven days up to past 365 days, predetermined selections there, to just give you an idea of how many people are going to your profile and then clicking on that follow button. And then if you want detailed, like, daily data, they now allow you to export that as a CSV file. And then there's also some information about your followers that you currently have, such as what are their top job titles, locations, industries, and other categories. Again, thinking about these are folks who, um, they may or may not be connected with you, but because they follow you, they still see all of your feed posts. They see when you make updates to your profile and things like that. So they are looking at what you're doing on LinkedIn. Okay, so we're at the end. I've given you a lot of information, um, but I want to just give out these kind of three main tips uh, that I think will, will be helpful to kind of sum everything up. So what do I want you to remember? Just fill out your whole profile. I've seen so many profiles, especially on resumes and things. Go to click on those, mostly empty. You used up some valuable resume space that wasn't helpful for you. Just fill out your whole profile. Be specific with the things you add in there, be relevant, and be thorough. It really doesn't take that much time to fill that out the very first time. Use LinkedIn's features. So add the skills to the jobs, add your thumbnails, add your website links. And then last, track your visibility. So look at your viewers, look at where you're showing up, look at your followers, just keep Keep, a, keep an eye on how you're showing up, people that are sending you messages, they're looking at your profile, they're sending you connection requests. Those all tell you the kind of audience that you're attracting. Last but not least, take a plant, which has my LinkedIn QR code, because shameless self-promotion, you can add me on LinkedIn. Uh, I am on there basically every day. Um, but also take a plant with you, and also as a reminder to keep growing in the, in the LinkedIn space. Yes, there's only limited plans though, so it's first come, first serve only plans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you.